Welcome back to the channel folks. Today I'm going to be talking about the new release of the whoo, singing, dancing Navis VLX3 and quite frankly why I'm a little bit disappointed. Okay so a couple of weeks ago I was scrolling through my LinkedIn posts and I saw some cryptic message from the guys over at Navis talking about a new release and I got super excited. Now if you've never been to this channel before you can check out some of my older videos about mobile mapping and you can also check out the video where I went first hand and had a look at the Navis and we actually used it on a project and I was kind of blown away at the start by kind of the technology that they've got and how much at the forefront of laser scanning they were at that point. Now, roll on quite a few years now, and Navis, like I said a couple of weeks ago, put out this little teaser saying something was coming, and it's come, yes. This week, the Navis VLX version 3 has been released. And to be frankly, I'm a little bit underwhelmed and disappointed, and here's why. When the original Navis first launched, I was super excited, and I was very impressed. This mobile mapping system, was able to capture incredible laser scans, the software was good, the hardware was crazy, it was like this new wearable technology with awesome cameras, lasers on it. Now, as with any form of technology, things move super quick in the world of developing new hardware and software. And there were a few things with the Navis that I just hoped that it would have. And with this upgrade, I really thought that those things would be coming. So. Let's go through exactly what it is that I thought they would come out with, what they have come out with, and why I am a little disappointed. Firstly, I must say that there's not a huge amount of information there on the uh, VLX3. I have been on the website and tried to look for hard specifics in terms of like camera pixel, etc. And I was struggling to get some information. I will stand corrected if anything that I've done in this video isn't strictly true. And I'm also open to people's opinions and views as always. Okay, so one of the first things that they've said about this new unit is that it's more compact and more sleek and can actually fit down into a box that you can move around. I, I can't see that. So initially looking at the two photos of the previous version and then the three, it actually looks like it's slimmed down slightly on the body, but the actual unit itself hasn't changed. So the unit in terms of it's worn above your head and then there's this like front piece and then the bit that sits around your waist which helps take the weight. It kind of looks like the same hardware. They've just slimmed it down. If anything, I was kind of expecting it to be more compact and it seems like the actual length of it, if anything, it looks a little bit more cumbersome. Maybe that's because of the mechanics now of it being able to fold down smaller. They needed to make it stretch out. I'm not sure, but I was a little bit confused by this. Second up, there's big talks about the resolution of the camera. The one thing that did disappoint me with the Navis was when the captured photos were brought into the software. The photos just weren't that crisp. Now, in today's world where you have iPhones, where the technology is incredible, that have LiDAR and the photos are amazing. For me, I was really underwhelmed by that and I was hoping that this new model would just smash it with the pixels on the photo. And I believe I've read on a post that they are 20 megapixels. This just seems massively underwhelming for something that's coming in around about the 90,000 pound figure. Like, why can't they put extremely high pixel cameras on this machine? For me, that is the one thing. These 3D meshes that we're seeing floating around online, point clouds are amazing, but the meshes just don't cut it for me. And I think it's all down to the photos. Like, put on there an amazing, amazing camera. But yeah, 20 megapixels kind of seems like you're just back in the 90s. Just before we get on to some more points about the Navis, I just wanna say this video is sponsored by PQS Tech Solutions. These guys are currently building an awesome software solution, which is gonna tie into where a lot of the hardwares of like the Navis, the X7, or any, anything really that is in the mobile mapping world along with drones. They are building a custom software that ticks all the boxes for what us engineers want out in the field. And I'm super excited to be in the background and see what those guys are actually doing for the industry. It is incredible. So go ahead, because I do make videos for their channel, go over to their channel and hit subscribe. And let's get back to the main part of the video. Okay, number three, now this was a big one. The really annoying thing about the Navis, I'm trying hard here not to, to slam the Navis, I still think it is a great product. However, you had to walk and then stop in order to capture, walk and then stop, walk and then stop. So actually the process of capturing a scan wasn't that quick. It was quicker than the X7, which is obviously on a tripod, you have to let it scan and then you move it. But 
it wasn't fast enough. The step up wasn't big enough. So with this version of the Navis, they are saying it's now at a walkable pace and that you don't have to stop. That is great. That is something that has always been needed. So it'd be really interesting to find out just at what pace you can walk and how this speeds up jobs. So here I will give the Navis a plus. That's a good upgrade. Now, finally, I don't know why I'm expecting this. Maybe I'm expecting too much, but I was really hoping for some sort of GPS in there. With the Navis, you still have to tie into stations or coordinate points if you want to change your model to you know a localized position and as an engineer and as a surveyor there are lots of jobs out there that are not on global coordinate system and they're on local and it's quite frustrating and the Navis is quite hard to do in terms of tying into a local coordinate system you kind of have to take the unit off and then kind of put the back bit onto like a crosshair so if you've got a retro you've kind of got to lean it up to the retro sticker and then make sure that it ties in it wasn't an easy process when I saw this happen for me maybe something like I don't know a little eye piece that you could then like shoot through to, to I don't know I don't know it just for me doesn't work and why what why not put a GPS into the system I feel like this would have been a massive game changer for Navis you know when you're working with meshes and models having the location on the photos is game changing and I would just have loved to have seen that with the Navis especially for the price point that it is. Okay, right, next up, they say there's a new monitor um, so you can see where you're scanning so that you don't miss anything. I don't know, but I, I see the monitor was on the original Navis, so I'm not sure what the upgrade is here. And I'm confused, is this some sort of like Apple, you know, upgrade where Apple frustratingly brings out a new phone and it's like minor things that tempt you, but in reality, do you really need them? There's nothing, there's no game changing upgrade here that gets me super excited. The one thing they've talked about is an increase in accuracy, I believe. So five millimeter in global accuracy. Yeah, it's it's good. You know, anything from kind of two to five mil. Yeah, it, accuracy increase is great. But for me, again, I'll say it, an increase in accuracy and the ability to have GPS on the unit would have would have been really good. So why have I been so harsh on the Navis? Well, let's just look at this in reality. You have your traditional laser scanners, something like the Trimble X7, the Faro. Then you've got your full on mobile mapping systems like the MX9 that Trimble does, which is mounted on a car. Now, you have these two systems and what I was really hoping for was this kind of like hybrid that sits in the middle, both price range and what, you, what you're getting. So mobile mapping on the car, you know, that unit sits on a car and you can pretty much, well, you can pretty much only map where you drive. So there's a restriction there. And with the X7, you can pretty much only map where you can take the tripod and it doesn't sit on you. It's quite a primitive solution. So for me, this middle area is where Navis sits. But does it do enough? No, I don't think so. I'm really torn, but I was disappointed. I really hoped Navis would kind of just step up that game to keep that middle ground. You know, the X7 is coming in around about £40,000. I believe the Navis, I'm not sure about the VLX3, but sits normally around about £90,000. And then you've got your mobile mapping systems that sit on cars, like the Trimble MX9, which is I'm going to say like 100k plus and for something to sit in the middle I just I just feel like it needs to offer a little bit more. So what did I want to see from Navis? Well I've said it over and over again I wanted to see a GPS in there. I wanted to see a far better camera like the 20 megapixels. No come on do better than that. I want those meshes looking super super sharp and tight. And then finally like I think this is the biggest gap here in the market is you have systems that sit on cars, you have systems that sit on tripods, and then you have wearable technologies like the Navis. Like we need the hybrid. So where's the system that can be mounted on a car? Like why can't you take the Navis off and put it on a car? Or why can't you take what's off the car and wear it? Or put it on a moped or put it on a scooter? Just anything like there needs to be something that offers more of a solution than just walking around or putting on a tripod or putting on a car. Something that can do everything for me is a game changer. And maybe I'm being a little bit biased here because I have seen something that is coming to the market which has started to tick the boxes of what I feel a mobile mapping system needs to be able to do in order for it to be affordable, but not only that, for actually to give engineers what they actually want in the field. I've said this before, I think there's a massive disparity between software engineers and hardware engineers and actual site users. 
engineers that are on site and what we want and what we need. And I've seen some new hardware that I think, well, for me, I firmly believe that they have made that true connection. They have asked what people want and they've come up with the solution. And for me, that is super exciting. I'm not talking about one piece of hardware here. I'm talking out quite a few different hardwares from different companies. And alongside that comes the software too. So stay tuned to this channel if you want to hear more about those products that are coming up. I'm so looking forward to doing reviews because the future of construction is where these products lie. Like it is mobile mapping, it is point clouds, it's LiDAR, it's drones. It's happening and it's happening fast and I'm super excited. So in the meantime, Go and have a look at the Navis if it's something you're interested with. But for me, you just fell short of the mark this time. And uh, I think it's a product with great potential. It's just, for me, just didn't do it. So if you want to learn more about mobile mapping, point clouds, LIDARs, drones, then this channel might be the place for you. So go ahead and click subscribe and I'll be back with some more videos.